My wife and I drove down to South Texas on a bit of a whim and a prayer to hopefully see SpaceX's Starship SN15 launch. We didn't really know where we were going, where to stay, or anything, but now we do. If you're thinking about coming down soon yourself, or even if you're just interested in what it's like to actually travel to Texas to see SpaceX's facilities, here's a guide for you. From location to lodging to restaurants and even to where you can charge your Tesla or other BEV for free, we'll give you the information you need to know to make your trip even more amazing. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm super excited to talk about all the things that we learned about how to go watch a Starship launch. But first, let me say how excited we are to be associated with Webull, which is a stock and now a cryptocurrency trading application. You can check out all the details in the description. When you sign up, you get access to stock, and if you fund your account at over $100, they will give you two free stocks valued at up to $250 each, which is pretty awesome. And also don't forget about their new cryptocurrency functionality as well. Very, very cool. Anyway, we are super happy to be associated with Webull now. Definitely check out the information in the description for more on how you can help out the channel simply by going and signing up. Alrighty, on to SpaceX and Starship. So the first question, of course, is where is it? <laughs> it is in Texas. More specifically, it is in South Texas. More specifically, it is incredibly close to the Mexican border. It is basically our cell phones were actually telling us that we were in Mexico when we were at the Boca Chica site. So it's that close to the Mexican border. Essentially, you've got Boca Chica, you've got the Rio Grande River, and then you've got Mexico. So it's really, really close to that. So if you look at the very, very southern tip of Mexico on a map, Map and where it kind of interfaces with the Gulf of Mexico, that's where it is. Now, there's obvious reasons why it's placed there. Number one is because it's a southern location, and the lower the latitude, the more boost you get when you're launching to the east, so that's a good thing. Also, the launch trajectory is over the water, over the Gulf of Mexico, which means that there are a lot less issues in terms of launching. You certainly don't want to launch from like St. Louis, Missouri, where it would be going over thousands of miles of land as it took off. So there are obvious reasons why it's there. The Boca Chica area, or Starbase as it's now being renamed, is very, very isolated. It's only accessible by one road, which is Highway 4. So you have to drive down there and <laughs> there's no other ways. And sometimes there's a lot of traffic on this road because all the construction equipment, all the material, all the workers, everybody has to go down there. Plus, of course, all the tourists go down that way as well. The advantage, of course, is you can be super, super close to the facilities that they're constructing everything and also to the launch pad right now. And there's a really beautiful beach down at the end. Boca Chica Beach is absolutely lovely. So you can always take a little bit of a break and you can go hang out at the beach after you're tired of looking at the Starship, if you ever get tired of looking at the Starship. When you're there, be very, very careful to park only in designated areas. Basically, anywhere with a white cone you should avoid. And there's a wildlife management area that you have to keep free as well. And usually there's a guard sitting right there and they'll immediately tell you very nicely, but they will tell you that you gotta move. But in general, you can park anywhere that's legal to park and you can then just walk around all day as much as you want to. You can take pictures from across the road. You can do whatever you want, which is pretty darn amazing. And by the way, as a side note, yes, you will need a car to get around there. There is simply no public transportation. Tesla? Starship. <laughs> How much better could that be? This is an amazing thing. I have to say, I'm utterly blown away by the fact that I, I mean, I actually got a lot closer than this. I just couldn't really stop because they have uh, white cones up but I took some pictures but you can actually see uh, you know the skirt of the whole thing you can see the ship itself I assume in Brownsville there's some public transportation but it doesn't go all the way out to Boca Chica or to South Padre Island which is where you're probably going to need to stay you can of course take Ubers around if you want to or Lyft or whatever kind of you know ride sharing but it will cost you a good deal of money to do that so if you're flying in you're probably going to want to rent a car or you could alternatively just take Ubers or Lyft all the way around for the entire time. But no matter what, you will absolutely need a car to get around. And as another little note, the Boca Chica Village is actually sandwiched right in between the building and the launch facilities. It's very, very close to the building facilities, in fact. So it's pretty bizarre because you drive into a little neighborhood and there is the high bay and the mid bay just staring at you from the end of the street, which is pretty cool, but also really bizarre. And it's no wonder that SpaceX attempted to purchase all the land. And in fact, most of the houses now appear to be SpaceX property that they're using for offices or something along those lines. 
All right, so that's how you can see a Starship up close. How do you actually watch the launch? Well, you can't watch it in Boca Chica because that entire area gets closed down as the launch approaches. So what you need to do is go to South Padre Island, which is actually not very far away from Boca Chica in terms of as the crow flies, but you have to kind of make a big triangle. You have to, or a V-shape or something. You have to drive all the way from Boca Chica into Brownsville and then all the way back out to South Padre Island again, which takes 50 or 60 minutes to do depending on traffic. All right, so how do you actually get to the area to watch these launches? Well, the closest thing if you're flying in is to fly into the Brownsville airport, but that is rather expensive to do. Uh, the cheaper way to do it is to fly into Houston, one of the Houston airports, but that involves a six hour drive afterwards to get from Houston all the way down to South Padre Island to watch the launch. So those are the two ways of flying. One involves, of course, much more driving than the other one does, but there's an expense difference as well. Of course, if you live reasonably close, you can always road trip to it. And by the way, check out our really awesome video on our road trip and our Tesla Model Y. If you do that, of course, that resolves a whole bunch of the flying issues and so forth. But you're going to be driving a long ways because Texas all alone is absolutely huge. So basically flying and driving or just driving are the ways to get to South Padre Island and Boca Chica. What is the weather like? Well, that's an interesting question. Of course, it's going to vary depending on what time of year it is, but I think one thing you can count on is an awful lot of wind. It is really, really windy there. There is a massive wind farm just a little ways up the road from South Padre Island. So clearly it's windy all year long. Uh, at the time we were there, it was actually chilly. It was about 20 to 22 degrees centigrade or, or low 70s, which seems like it would be comfortable with that amount of wind. However, it was pretty chilly. So whatever the temperature is, you know, if it looks like it's going to be 30 or 35, which it definitely will be as the summer wears on. You obviously want to wear fairly light clothes, but you also want to prepare for the wind. And so you might want to bring warmer clothes than you think you might need to. Also, South Texas is basically tropical. It's desert, actually, but it's very, very low latitude for the United States. So definitely bring some sunscreen because you will get toasted otherwise. I definitely got sunburned the first day I was there. And here's something that we didn't even think about before we left, but there are immigration checkpoints around Boca Chica and actually driving up the road between Brownsville and Houston, Texas. You need to be aware of this. If you're a U.S. citizen, it's not going to be a problem. Just have your driver's license. But if you're a foreign national, as you go down there or as you go out to the SpaceX facilities, you're not going to have to deal with these immigration checkpoints. So it might not occur to you, but definitely bring your passport with you or something. You definitely need to bring some form of ID. Also, they do take pictures of you as you drive through. They have like flashy things that take pictures. And obviously there's face recognition. So if you happen to be in the mafia or witness protection or something, you might want to avoid this entire area. Now you can, if you fly into Brownsville and just go to South Padre Island and watch the launch and never go out to Boca Chica or Starbase and actually look at things up close and fly out of Brownsville, then you can avoid that. But of course you have to go through all of the stuff at the airport anyway. So anyway, it's just worth knowing that if you're not a US, if you are a US citizen, definitely bring your driver's license. But if you're not, you should definitely bring your passport or however you got into the United States to make sure that you don't have any issues when you go through immigration. All right, so on to where to stay. Well, if you want to stay for zero money on South Padre Island, there is beach access number five, which costs zero dollars a night. It is very, very lonely. There is no water. It's kind of, it's as far north as you can go. Essentially, the road in the middle of South Padre that goes north just ends in a sand dune. <laughs> and so a couple of miles before that is beach access number five. There are toilets there, but there is no other facilities. And it's, it's far away from where you want to watch the launch. So that's the, you know, that's the trade-off. But it is free. I believe it's only car camping at night. I don't think you can put up a tent there. So what if you want to pay a relatively low amount? Well, Isla Blanca Park is a great option. You can tent camp for $20 a night, and there's also RV camping. I don't know exactly how much that is. It's more, but I think it's around $50 a night. Again, all of this is going to depend on the time of year and all that stuff, but that's a ballpark figure. But you can, uh, you can easily stay for, you know, five days for $100 at that point if you're tent camping at that park, and that sounds pretty reasonable. There is also a KOA commercial camping area that's $57 a night for for tent camping and 91 a night for RVs. Again, just ballpark figures. It's going to change depending on time of year and exactly what your specifications are. But that's also really, really close. Both of these are super close to the south tip of the island, and both of them allow, I guess, direct viewing of the launch depending on where you are exactly within the park or RV area. And if you want to start spending more money, uh, the Pearl or the Holiday Inn, which are both within view, if you get the right <laughs> like room in the hotel, you can actually see the launch site from 
from your room, which is pretty darn cool. Those are going to be over a hundred dollars a night, depending, it goes way up depending on what time of year it is and whether it's the weekend or the weekday or anything. One thing that you need to remember is whatever the fee they tell you, they're going to charge you a $10 per person resort fee on top of that per day. So if you book the whole thing for five nights and it says like $500 or something, it's going to be 550 after they add the resort fee in. So just be aware of that. And if there's two of you there, of course, it'll be an extra hundred dollars. So it starts to add up pretty darn quickly. But anyway, they're reasonable prices. The Pearl is definitely an older hotel. Apparently it's going to be turned into a Margaritaville next year, which will be good because it will be updated, but it's going to be bad because I'm sure it's going to cost a lot more money. At this point, you know, the hundred bucks a night for a uh, basically you're on the ocean is really really nice so that's a pretty reasonable rate even though the rooms are you know just just meh there's nothing very special about that and of course if you want to stay in more style there are many many other options where you can go upscale from that and of course there's airbnb and other things like that if you want to get a house instead all right so what if you like us drive a tesla or other bev well, that's really cool because there are destination chargers. There are five of them at the Pearl, one of which is actually set up to be a more generalized charger, and there's six by the Holiday Inn. Uh, the Holiday Inn ones are very public. The ones at the Pearl are not. You actually have to be staying there and you have to have your little tag and stuff like that. But it's super, super nice to be able to drive your car in, just plug it in, get up the next morning and it's already charged up and ready to roll. That's awesome. So how about restaurants? Now, this is not going to be complete by any means because of course there's a lot of restaurants there. So you can discover your own and definitely if you know other ones, leave information in the comments because other people I'm sure would love to know. So some that we really, really liked, Mahi Nick was amazing. It's tucked in. It's a little difficult to find, but it's behind the dolphin uh, watch kind of cruise area and you have to look a little bit, but look on the GPS. It'll show you where it is and you just have to like, you know, be a little brave and walk into what well, looks kind of a hole in the wall. Super, super hole in the wall. There's nothing really to recommend it, except of course that it's sitting right on the ocean and it's beautiful. Outdoor dining, super nice. The people are amazingly friendly. The food is like, oh, so good. The other restaurant that we think is a complete discovery was La Bahia in Port Isabel, which is across the bridge from South Padre. That is a true hole in the wall Mexican restaurant. I think they said that it's only been open for four months at the time, but holy mackerel, the food was good. They have hot salsa, which you might not think would be a good thing, but with the chips, I'm just telling you, man, it was incredible how good that food was. So I highly recommend that. Again, just look on the GPS. I'll put up a little image on the map, but if you just put in La Bahia in Port Isabel, you'll find it. It's just a little bit off the main drag, not too far away. Other restaurants we really liked were Russo's, which is an Italian slash pizza place. Amazingly good pizza. Tequila Sunset was pretty amazing. Driftwood was a really fun and interesting bar with hammocks and all sorts of nice things right on the water. Really, really cool. Also, there is Laguna Bob's, which is really good stuff. There's also Pineapple Ninja, which is a great food truck, and there are taco trucks around. So there's a lot of food options. You don't really have to search too far, but these are some of the ones that we thought were real good highlights. We also went to Pier 19 in Port Isabel, and that food was, you know, adequate. It was okay, but if you're traveling with kids, it's very fun. It's got an outdoor area by the bay. It's got pirates and things in there. So you might enjoy that if you're traveling with kids, but don't expect the food to be outstanding. Of course, with Starship launches, since it's experimental, as we discovered, there's a lot of downtime while you're waiting. So are there other things to do in the area while you wait? Why, yes, there are. There's dolphin watching, there's scuba diving, there's wind surfing, there's actual surfing, there's all sorts of things to do. Just walk on the beach, you can make sandcastles. It's apparently a huge sandcastle building mecca. So I think the sand, for some reason, is really, really good for building sandcastles there. So there is tons of stuff to do. You can actually have a vacation and watch a Starship launch. If you're lucky, we were not lucky. We couldn't stay long enough. In fact, actually, it's been a week since, not a week since we got home, but a week since we left there and went to Austin, and it still hasn't launched. So anyway, it's, you know, you're going to have to just either be super patient or you will have to accept the fact that you may or may not see it. And I will go back, of course, to see it now that I know what I'm doing. But at any rate, it ends up being a lovely vacation and it is a lot of fun and the beaches are amazing. It's absolutely smashing. So it's worth going just for the vacation and you get a free, you know, Starship. Maybe not a launch, but at least you get to go look at it up close and personal and that's all cool. And of course, don't forget about the people. The people are amazing. The group of people surrounding 
the Starship, SpaceX environment. Uh, the workers are amazing. I, I met a woman at who was working at the gym and I went to the gym and she said her husband works for SpaceX and she put me in touch with him. So that was really cool. Mars Embassy was super amazing and actually we've got a relationship now so that if I'm doing live streams from home, I can use some of his video. And by the way, you should subscribe to him and watch his videos. They are amazing. Definitely support everybody there. And of course, Lab Padre, NASA Space Flight, uh, Tim Dodd lives there now, the Everyday Astronaut. So there are a ton of amazing people. The community is super open. Uh, you know, even non-famous people, even just other folks just who are coming to Gawk are, are so amazing and so interested and so knowledgeable that you can learn a ton just talking to people. So definitely be open to talking to people. And finally, when should you go? Well, <laughs> I mean, you just have to do your best. You have to pick a time that you're available to stay for a week or so right now. Now, eventually, I think the cadence is going to pick up, and so probably you'll be able to go more or less any time and see a Starship launch. But for now, at least, you just have to be patient. You have to take a chance. You have to realize that there's a good chance you won't actually see a Starship launch, and that's okay, right? You can always come back later on or something. But anyway, at this point, you just have to pick when is convenient for you and when you think it looks like one might launch, and then you just have to accept the fact that it may or may not happen. And you know what? That's all good because just being there and experiencing it and getting to see the Starship up close and getting to see the launch facilities and getting to meet the incredible people, it's all worthwhile just for that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, please do like and subscribe so other people can find it and so you can see more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all really, really helped support the trip down to Texas and to help with this discovery. So in a small way, this is a payback to all of you so that you can find out how you can go watch one of these launches if you have the opportunity. We have a bunch of people to do new Patreon shout outs to today, so here we go. We have Paul Weaver, Disturbed47, Norm Store, Mike Gaston, and Dennis Kane. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the team. And of course, for anybody else who wants to join, just check out the link in the description. Of course, when you go down to the launch, you have to wear some sort of cool t-shirt or something, right? So people know that you're awesome. So you could wear this one, Tesla, <laughs> Spaceships for the People. Or you could wear a Tesla Bot shirt, or you could wear one of our other shirts or something like that. Uh, so definitely check out the merch store in the description, and you can help out the channel and also have something cool to wear while you're down in Boca Chica. And definitely don't forget about Weeble. Check out the link in the description. If you go there and you sign up, you actually help out the channel, so thank you. And finally, don't forget that we are both Amazon and Tesla affiliates. Again, check the links in the description. You go shopping, you help out the channel. Thank you. And as always, don't forget to ask questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.